Well, opposition leader Peter Dutton today said that Foreign Minister Penny Wong's position is untenable after revelations that Australia gave funding to a United Nations agency after warnings that it was linked to the October 7 terror attacks. I believe that uh, Penny Wong's position is untenable if it's demonstrated that she had advice that this money could be used uh, for a purpose uh, that wasn't intended by the government. The anti-Israel bias within UNRWA, and that's the United Nations Relief Works Agency, is evident through their infiltration of Hamas. This is a point the Israeli President, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, made to the United Nations yesterday. He's, he said, it's been in the service of Hamas in its schools and many other things. He said, I say this with regret because we hoped there would be an objective and constructive body to offer aid. We need such a body today in Gaza, but the UNRWA is not that body. As you know, we've been reporting on UNRWA for several weeks now and exposing their links to terrorism and many of the teachers who are in their employ and how they celebrated the terrorist attacks on October 7. Well, joining me now for an exclusive interview is Israel's Special Envoy for Combating Anti-Semitism, Michelle Kotler-Wunsch, live from Israel. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Michelle, Thank you so much for having me. How naive were Western leaders, like our Foreign Minister Penny Wong, in giving millions and millions of dollars in funds to UNRWA while turning a blind eye to the many reports over many years that it was infiltrated by terrorist supporters? So this is a critical question to be asking ourselves, actually in democracies around the world that have been funding UNRWA for decades, including knowing that it directly supports terror and we've seen the infrastructure that Hamas built with international humanitarian aid from democratic countries that are bound by the foundational principles of international law, certainly are not to be supporting terrorist infrastructure, as we have seen, terrorist education that is anti-Semitic in its very um, uh, inculcation of deep hatred, the hatred of Jews that would not be allowed to be taught in the curriculum of schools in democracies around the world, and the continued enabling of the support for Hamas terrorists that hold not just Israelis in this threat, constant threat of the genocidal of attack of which we saw on 10-7, but in fact hold Palestinians hostage, including literally stealing humanitarian aid from Palestinians. And that is the moment of reckoning for democratic countries around the world, Australia included, that have enabled the continued funding of UNRWA. And let's be clear, mm. UNRWA is a singular singular refugee agency that was created only solely for Palestinians. There is another refugee um, uh, a platform that helps all other refugees in the world. And it is capable very much of helping Palestinians as much as it does all other refugees, including the fact that UNRWA perpetuates the refugee status as opposed to any other refugees. Only Palestinian refugees hand mm. down their refugee status from generation to generation to generation. And that is why UNRWA must be dismantled. I mean, there are now calls, you know, you say UNRWA must be dismantled, but there are calls uh, for its funding to continue. Oxfam, other aid agencies, world leaders are saying the funding needs to continue. They say this is just a few bad apples, even though there's been evidence in the Wall Street Journal that it's 1,200 of their employees have been linked to terrorism. Even our Prime Minister has indicated in an interview on Triple J that this is only a temporary pause from Australia while an investigation is underway. What's your response to all of this, to all of these world leaders who claim that the millions of dollars need to keep pouring into UNRWA? The importance of understanding, and it's not a few bad apples, the entire barrel has been proven as rotten. And as, as much as hearings that were held, including in the US Congress just the other day, of 3,000 teachers that celebrated the burning of entire families, the rape, the massacre, the mutilation, the murder, the abduction of thousands of doctors who held hostages, 136 of them still held in the dungeons, the hell dungeons of, of Hamas terrorists, held in their home, abducted hostages stolen from their homes, doctors, teachers. And I said before, 
the inculcation of anti-Semitic hate, the indoctrination mm. that teaches children in second grade mathematics using equations that would never be taught such anti-Semitism in the curricula of countries that are funding this. And so this, as I said, is a moment of reckoning to understand that UNRWA has been exposed for what it is, which is yeah. actually an, an aiding and abetting agency to genocidal terrorists that are holding their own civilians as hostages, and even those that are committed to Palestinians, or especially those that are committed to Palestinians having a better future, must ensure that UNRWA is not just temporarily defunded, but in fact, as I said, completely dismantled. And as we know, there are other possibilities for support and humanitarian aid. At the moment, it is not humanitarian aid. Mm -hmm. It is directly aiding and abetting terror. Uh, now, just quickly, finally, before you go, your position, you're the special envoy for anti-Semitism in Israel. We've obviously seen an explosion in anti-Semitism globally since the terror attacks. Why do you think this has been the case and what's the best way for us all to respond to this? Thank you for asking that, because, you know, as Israel's special envoy for combating anti-Semitism, I think that's what's been most troubling is that the very same anti-Semitism that fueled the atrocities, the war crimes, the crimes against humanity of 10-7 is the anti-Semitism that fuels the responses to the atrocities and the war crimes of 10-7 that have been silent, that have denied that have justified, that have supported the genocidal terror organization Hamas that perpetrated those atrocities and that have attacked Jews around the world, in Australia included, on campuses, on the streets, on social media spaces and beyond. Mm -hmm. And in this sense, it is critical that we identify that an ever mutating virus, which anti-Semitism is, it has existed for as long as Jews have, thousands of years of Jew hatred have mutated. And this strain, and it is a lethal strain of anti-Semitism, that is the strain of anti-Zionism, or the negation of Israel's very right to exist, has to be identified if we are to comprehensively to combat anti-Semitism. And we have the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition, the result of a long democratic process that enables us and actually places the responsibility to actually do precisely that, using the IRA working definition yeah. to identify and combat anti-Semitism comprehensively in all of the spaces and places and countries which it has percolated and festered for so many years mm -hmm. and expo exploded in the post-107 tsunami of anti-Semitism mm -hmm. around the world. OK. Look, you have your work cut out for you, that's for sure. But thank you so much for joining us tonight or this morning in Israel. Really appreciate it. Michelle Kutler-Wunsch, thank you.